Hey, hi. So, um, I have not come live for like a couple of days now. I've been very, very exhausted. Like, you know, it's Christmas week, so everyone's just very busy. So, let's just let's jump in. So, we're in um late lecture four, and today it's libraries we're going to be covering. So let's let's just start. So in Python, a library is a collection of functions. Basically, it can be um one that you created by yourself or one that you imported or one that is inbuilt. So if you are when you are working with um Python, there are certain functions that are already inbuilt. Like let's open and we're we're going to use um PyCharm. Yes. Where's my picture? <laughs> Where's my picture? Did I delete it? I don't remember deleting it. Uh uh. I mean, I don't know seen well, I think I deleted my picture, but like how? How is it even possible? Cool. Well, you can go to the main place where your installed Python file is, and you can find um collection of Python in bit folders. I wanted to use PyCharm because PyCharm will just list it there. You see built-in packages, I think, or something. I can't find my picture, I don't know why. Wow. Okay, I think I'll need to install it again. I don't remember deleting it. Why I delete it? Alright, but um So Python comes with a collection of inbuilt packages. Those are packages that you can just import it directly into your program without having to install it first. Then on the topic of installing, there are other programs that when you want to make use of them, you have to install them. These are programs that other people, sorry, these are packages that other people already created and usually uploaded to. There's this of called PYPI, there is Python Package Index. So people have already gone to upload, so you can just go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. People have uploaded their own packages there. Then install the name of the package you want to install. Then you can now import the package into your program then if you are let's say as your own personal developer you are working with a code you want to use multiple times you can just um you know create a model for it like maybe a python file or a python directory don't forget to initialize the directory and then you can also install it into your program and if you wish you can export it into the python index but um yeah so that is basically everything we need about libraries so let's see what they did here. So the first thing they're interested in is this random. So this random is a built-in Python library. I, I, I've made use of it before when we're doing this, when I did the work. I think most of this this program, this program I did has covered a lot of things. So made use of random when we're working with rock, paper, scissors. So the random is built-in, so you don't need to install random, you just need to import it into your program. And when you import it, you can start accessing everything that is within the random. So how I this now import it's very simple. So let's just open up. I'm feeling like I do it. I just code and code is getting to me. And let's say the name of the package random. But if I do this. If I do this, when I want to access anything, I think I give an extra space. When I want to access anything from random, I'll have to now do random dot the thing out to um, make use of. But if I don't want to do this, because it's going to make my code look bulkier. And that thing I can do is say from random. 
I can now import a specific thing I want. If I want to import every single thing in the random package, I will just use an asterisk. So what this thing is basically from random import every single function that is inside the random file. And that means I can say um if I want to maybe shorten it, I can just say import import random as whatever I want to import it as I can import it as H, I can import it as gg whatever so instead of now calling random it's not going to be gg dot whatever it is i want to access so let's just import run let's import everything from random all right so inside the random so you can go to if you just go and google python has like yeah there's a place where they like give you full details about um, all the models you want to make use of, so you can know everything. So I think that's just triangle. My goal is going to be, my network is going to be to evolve. So you can just go and Google it yourself. Also, I don't know if my network will pick up, but while I'm waiting for that. So some of the basic things. More. Okay, so it's here. Dog .python .org. Three because it's Python three, almost everybody's using now. And um all right. So um let's implement this random choice. So if you remember the if you are, if you have not if you're not with us when we did the rock paper system. project you see it's just good there but basically what I did I created a list let's just call it list in this case and I assigned values to the list so let's just assign random values into this list let us say dog let's say cat and I don't know let's say pig because why not so now I even want to pick a random thing from this um i want to pick a random value from this list i've generated but i want it to like change every time because normally i play rock paper scissors against a computer the computer's choices are going to be different every time it's not every time the computer is going to be playing rock playing rock playing rock it may play rock now the next time you re you reshuffle the game it's going to play scissors or paper so in order to be able to make the choices dynamic thank you very much for your to this guys how to pronounce your name so now to make the choice dynamic, you would um you would use this random import. So since we have imported every single function from the random file by using from random import asterisk, so we don't have to call let's do this, let's print. Let's print. So we don't have to now start doing um we don't have to start doing um random dot choice because we already imported choice. We'll just call um choice and then in the choice we're going to have a bracket which is now going to collect the list we want to import for list so if we save it and if we run it All right, so we ran it the first time we got dogs. So let's run it again and hope because they see a probability may bring us give us dog again because the choices here are limited. But let's just run and hope it gives us another um option. Okay, generated cat this time. If we run it again, it may or may not give us pig, but I don't know if you are seeing what is happening. We have given we have passed in a list to um we have created a list which has right now three different values. Okay, call dog again. So what we now did is that list we created, we now passed it into the choice and um, we're calling it. So it's just um, generating random, um, it's generating random, what do you call it? 
random it's like picking random stuff from inside the list that we gave it so that is why you like why that's all made of it in our when we're working with our rock paper scissors game so choice is just you give it a list and we'll just pick things at like different we don't know what algorithm is it's just picking it at random you the developer doesn't know what is going to come next the users don't know what is going to come next then um another thing that is inside um that's present in this random file that we use a lot is shuffle let's just copy this and just shuffle it so i don't know if you play with cards how do you spell shuffle hopefully this is spell shuffle i don't know if you play with cards but you know when you're playing with cards you have like a deck of cards and you shuffle it and you now share maybe you are um um i don't know what you guys call it but when you now dish out four cards to everybody play nobody knows what cards they're going to get but as the whole game runs through you know that okay i don't think that is a good okay let's use like this instead let's say you have 10 cards in your hand and you shuffle those cards at random and you lay everything down no matter what happens even though the arrangement is going to be different every single card is going to show so what this is now going to do is going to take this list we are giving it and it's going to rearrange this so every single time when you run it again the list is going to be arranged so right now as i created the dog is first if i run it dog maybe second dog maybe last it doesn't really matter it just and it may still dog may still be first it's just that if i continue running the program continue on the program you see all these syntax is generating is going to be different so let's run it this first time and just hope it's going to bring it out different so we can see it All right, so um, we can see now my my initial rearrangement was dog, cat, and pig. Now it's cat, pig, and dog. You can see now is dog. Okay, it gave us back my initial arrangement. Dog cat and pig if i were still to run it again it's going to give me cat dog and pig so you can like you can write you can pass in the more variables you have this basic probability the more variables you have the more you have sorry um yeah it's probability permutation and combination is probability so the more variables you have the more chances you have of um getting the more um chances you have of generating um different um values or whatever okay we've well done choices okay um random integer guys if you want to generate a random number be between a range so um so the way this work is that um so um, we'll pass in rand, so rand int, that is random integer. And then the first value is kind of like um, the range which we want it to run through, something like that. So I just were passing integers into here, so let's run it. So it said like every single time we run it, a number should be different. So I use this, if you check my GitHub, I have an app where I made use of this when I was generating, um, I was developing a guessing game. Okay, I'm not doing HTML. I'm not really. I'm not. I'm, I just learned HTML so I can make use of Django template. I'm because it's like this program, but I'm not deep into HTML. But it's Python we're doing now. Why is base64 even? I don't know what that is. Let me Google it.
right? Um, so I developed a guessing game, and basically what the game does is it asks the user to okay. If the first thing I did was um this one the users will not see by the back end. The first thing I did was um as create a variable and assign a random integer to that variable using rand it and I gave it a range that I wanted it to run through. So um since is um since it's going to like every single time the program is restarted, the variable is holding a different value. And um once it's now generating, I'll now ask the user for an input. And maybe I I can't remember if I gave the user a hint, but I think I'll give the user a hint is between this number and this number. So these are supposed to guess. I gave these are three guesses. If you remember back what we did um the last time I went live, when we will um have wow this and now try and accept. So if this value is equal to then break the program else as these are so okay, no. So the thing that was assigned a value three, which is the amount of tries the user can make, three different tries. And then um as the user runs the program, for every time the user gets it wrong, we're going to remove the number, we're going to like reduce their life, and once their life is equal to zero. We're going to break the program, but if the user gets correctly, we're going to break it and pass it and um, pass like a positive message or whatever. So um, print run it. So you can see the first time we ran, we got one. The second time we ran, we got six. And we can continue running. We're never going to get seven goals, so we can continue running and continue running. And we'll just keep getting the numbers as um, you know, different numbers at each time. Is this supposed to be like something to help your them um, the speed at which you get requests or whatever? I don't know. Sure, I'm not. I'm not into like anything front end. Honestly, you know, to be honest, I hate any single thing front end. I hate HTML. I hate CSS. I hate. Like I don't hate JavaScript. I dislike JavaScript. But um, you can watch. Um, I so I think free code camp. I've never. I've not watched the HTML tutorial before, but. Um, there are JavaScript tutorials since both, so I think the HTML tutorial will be good. So you can watch um, channels like that. There are channels on YouTube that are actually like are very dedicated to like teaching HTML and everything. So you can watch channels like that. Hundred. So they said um from statistics. I'm importing everything. Star. Stat. Oh, I don't know how to spell. Sorry. Um. From statistics, we are going to import asterisk so that we don't have to start calling statistics within our within our program. Sorry, program. But you can, if you don't, if you want to just call, if you like using the statistics dot syntax, then um just import statistics. So when you want to access anything, you do statistics dot. But I don't like seeing that. It makes my program look too long, and I don't like it. So I will import everything for with asterisk, unless maybe just one particular thing I want to import. And I want to from statistics import this. But usually, in the check most of my program, I'm I'm importing with asterisk so that any single thing I want to access, even if I I won't have to start going back and start importing it again, I'll just call it. So we want to work with mean. So mean, if you are familiar with your basic mathematics, what mean does it? Um, just guys, who is phrase? Phrase. My name. My name is phrase also, and I'm, if phrase just joined us, that's nice. So, um, basically, what statistics does is um, okay. Mean we know what mean is. Mean takes I think this is the average. So it would, if we if we had to pass two integers or two fields, it would add it together and divide it by two things. It's two. We pass if we pass three, you add it together and divide it by three. So that's what this mean function does, and that is what every other function like. It's just helping you do your basic statistical math. So let's just print a very basic um one here. Let's say, um, mean. I'm now going to pass two um, integers here. So let's just say, let's do numbers I can easily calculate. Let's do um two and, I don't know, six. Where is the mean of sun? Six, six. I think it should be four. Let's save it and run it. Mean takes only one argument, are you sure? Oh, it's supposed to be least. Sorry. Sorry. All right, let's run it. It's supposed to be passing as a least. I didn't do that. All 
enter was correct so it gave you four so that you can still the same way we have found the documentation for random um you just if you come here this place this docs.python.org is your python documentation um me honestly i've not read every single thing but if there's anything you're having an issue with you can just come here especially if it's like all these inbuilt you follow the inbuilt um inbuilt models if you now start working with um getting models that like were uploaded by usually other people are using python you will now come to pyp either is python um package index so okay this one this is the python index i was then researching um i was researching a package so you just come so the the um the url is just pypi.org you go there there are a lot so much so many different um what do you call it packages that you can make use of in your program so you just install it using pip so pip installs the name of the package like this pip install in this case it's going to i was making use of it's for junk i was using it you just do pip install what it is you want to install and you cannot access it so you can just come here for whatever it is you want to use there are so much so you personally cannot learn everything but as you work with more programs you are going to um get the hang of it so okay so see this one here they did um they spoke about command line argument so basically what is command line arguments are all right so i'm using um debugger to run my python program but if I want to run this Python program by myself, the ideal way of running my program is Python. I was about to say Python manage.py. Python test py, uh, and I would run it, and it's going to run my program for me successfully. So Python is the call function we're using, <clears throat> and we're now using this um, um command line arguments. Command line, you know what an argument is? Yeah, we have been working with functions. An argument is anything that can be passed. So right now the python is the function we're calling is a run function and the the argument we're currently passing to is is the name of the file we want to run which in this case is test.py but what if we could pass a second argument into our terminal and we'll, we'll be able to access it from our program so i mean ideally i i don't maybe they would be but i'm going to import a new model so this one remember when i went live the other day i was talking about exit exit and i mentioned sys exit where i kept just calling exit so you can use exit just like that but sys exit is like what this is this is, is a model it allows you to carry out to like normal functions of things you do in your your system it allows you to implement it into your program so i'm just going to um let's use my normal way of importing well okay so say from um c so this is just sys like from system import um we're going to import all so same thing you can find the documentation in docs.python i think dot org so what i want to do there's this this command line argument this is of called argv so i know you might start confusing it when i was talking about um args and quags when you're working with um um functions but no this one is different so it's not so different though but it's a bit it's a bit different so basically what we're doing is we're getting the argument that was passed into the system as um as a string so as a list sorry so when you when you just think of it this way you have a list you have an empty list right and then you run python so don't python is not going to be a part of that list because python is the function that is being called so the argument is now going to take everything that comes after Python. So in this case now, our first argument is going to be this test.py, which, which means it's going to be the first thing that is going to be present in our list here. So our list now currently holds only one element. Like for every single time we're running our program, our list only has one um, element, which is the name of the file, in this case, test.py. And we want to access it, we're going to now print whatever this list is, and the index is going to be zero because list starts at zero so is a zero i think is it zero index in the first i can't remember so it's zero and the next one after it is going to be one so let's just use this thing we have just gotten and let's print the name of the file we're running so if we want to do this we're going to say print now the stuff we're going to make use of that allows us to have uh, uh, to access any argument that is passed after python when we're running our program is called um argv and we're just going to um square bracket are supposed to use and we'll just call zero because it's zero we want to use now so let's run it 
So you know I'm I know no 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 okay I ran it I ran it um as a debug so I want to run it manually let's run it manually so you can see it gave us test.py now what if I were to now run this thing and change it from zero to one obviously now it's going to give us an error because we're not running any, anything after test.py so if we run it now we're going to get an error an index error which is the basic error line bundle error we got earlier so you can um try and accept you can do for or whatever or you can use them a basic condition um if length so even though the index we're printing is at um one the length is two because they are currently two elements so if um God, why, do, why do I keep doing this? I keep, I keep uh, running by default. I was like, sometimes I'm just used to doing by default. Sorry. Um, so let's um, print only test.py. I can see nothing happened because we said two parts if the length isn't equal. But we're going to now print with an extra argument. It's not going to pass in my name. So you can use this in different ways. You just be creative and know how you want to implement your program. But basically, I just want to say this stuff called ARGB. ARGB, just think of it as a list that holds every argument called after your Python run function. So as you are calling a new function, you're just pushing it into your ARGB list. So ARGB is your list. Just think of it as you would any normal list that you're declaring yourself. Um, so that is basically everything for command line arguments. Okay, this slides now. I've already explained slides now. I explained using positive index and negative indexing. So if you don't understand, the video is on my YouTube. But packages. So these packages is why I just introduced you to now. Um, working with um. Um, where are importing something from from here? Pypi. So um, I'm trying to think what package. The package them they use here is Kelsey, but I don't use that package honestly. But what package should we um look into? Do they call any other package? Okay, they called the request dot api. So should we enter this? Uh, let's do it. So APIs are called application program interface. If you are if you work with webs or if you develop if you do if you develop in general, you know that sometimes when you want to access something like okay, even if you I think my network is back, hopefully. Alright. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the model, the package they used in their own tutorial. So that is the request package. So if you work with web, as I was explaining, if you work with web apps, especially like Google, because that is one of the most popular ones, when you want to access certain Google functionality, you have to generate an API. And when like, you just you go to your settings, you generate an API, it's going to be like a string of codes and you pass into the program you want to implement it as to allow you to have access to like special features that are present in that thing so one thing that allows to do is request request is usually i don't know if it's um, available in other like mobile i mean normal apps but like when you're working with web apps like let me just give you a glimpse of my jungle so you guys know I'm, i've been working on um i've been building my own um take on on youtube so um about all the errors i've been getting i've been getting since i'm almost done i'm just implementing likes comment and maybe subscribe and it would launch completely but let me show you my views.py here so you can see i'm getting a request here because i want to access um i want to access like um i want to get a response from a different page that is present on my web so it's like request allows you to communicate with your web server so um there's this stuff there's this model called request let's just read on it here request 
It's supposed to allow our function to our Python program to function and get um, responses from the normal um your normal web page. So I'm just going to quickly brief on it here. So if we want to join, so the app they use here is iTunes. I don't even use iTunes. So let's first of all let's install this pip. So remember I was saying if you want to install, you will use this pip. This pip install is what you used to install, and that thing that most people don't tell you. Because as you're installing all these packages, all these packages is occupying spaces on your system, obviously. So if you are, if you realize that a package you installed, you're no longer making use of it, then what you what you would want to do is pip uninstall and the name of the package and it's going to uninstall that package. But now we want to install, so we want to install request. So it's just going to be pip install request. So if I was only going to use this pip for this specific program I'm working on, I'll be running in a virtual environment. But since I'm just Let's. I'm not going to virtual environment now, so I'm just going to pass pip install request, and I'm going to just run it to make sure you're connected to the internet, and it's going to um, download it. You can also download and set it up manually. Okay, I already have it in my system. You can also use, you can download and set it up manually, but now it's downloading the file going to the directory where all your um, installed packages are saved and extracting it there. But it's best to just do pip install. Okay. Um. All right, so it says it's on the Apple iTunes has its own API that you can access in your programs in your internet browser. You can be so this is supposed to be like the link. So, um, yeah, um, okay, so what they're saying basically, so for iTunes, let me, let's just copy this link. So, iTunes own API is this link. So, basically, what this link allows is going to return a, a JSON file. So, yeah, um, this is the main link. This is just a bunch of strings of random code. But even now to search for something, so this limit here is to limit the amount of songs we want or the amount of results you want to get. So only if he used one because he's only requesting for one. Um, so only one thing should be outfitted to him, and he's searching for wizard. So you can pass this wizard here, like the name of the um artist he wants to pick up on. So you can pass in whatever artist is you're interested in. But let's just use a bunch of like um. My name's honestly, I don't know. Maybe okay. So he has downloaded the files. Okay, All right? He's downloaded the file. So you can see this file. So this file is the response to what it is we just loaded. It's going to be like just a collection of objects and data. So you can see it here. Personally, by us, it's not readable, but if we were to run into like a program that has been generated through the which is what we're trying to build now, it's going to come like take it and see how long the code is it's going to take it and sort it out and kind of like break it. iTunes own results, it's iTunes that sent us the results. But the reason why we're able to access it is because we had like we didn't have that link. Even though, like, if we wanted to use Power Awesome Self, we will have to go generate a normal ID and use that. But they have given us a link, and using that link, we're able to generate what we wanted. So it gave us like the track, the song, the artist ID, um, whatever. I personally don't understand that. So um, um, I think it's not the only thing. There's so many like even Coinbase. And I think Coinbase is becoming so popular, and other Google, Google Maps especially. We want to be able to access um their data. This is where you, you generate an API. So let's just go and work on, on it with our um request with our request API. So I'm just going to kind of like sort it out and have a more presentable um output of the program we're currently working on. Let me just delete this, sorry. Oh yeah, I say um I say playing because you guys have been telling me to play Call of Duty, but um TikTok has never given me my stream key, so um I'm currently streaming on Switch. So I think I'll, I'll I don't even know if it's linked, but I'll link my Switch to my link tree in my bio, so you can go there and just subscribe. So that one is in the afternoon. Um, usually around twelve in the afternoon, I I stream on Switch for the, just an hour. I think.
All right, so once you install your request, let, let's just copy that link again. I think I still have the link. Let's just copy the link and just leave it blank here. We're going to access it. I don't have the game. Um, so since we have now installed so usually remember before we we're not installing anything we we're just importing the package we wanted to make use of directly because it was inbuilt but now you actually you can All right, so now let's just let's try importing request. And let's run it. So I'm expecting to get some type of error because I don't think it's ready. I'm so sure. I am. So you can see model not found, no model named request. But if I now, if I now install it and I now run the same program, it's going to run successfully. So once it's installed, we're going to now um so it's just it's a simple program we're going to make. We're going to do um write a program that just prints the like um okay. All right. So let's let's just write a very simple program. So the program the program they worked on was to just get um the users um get the users um what do you call it? Um Yes, the name of an auto, sorry, an artist that is wants to search on. So let's just, we'll just um, do that quickly. So let's import system because we can do that. Um, them, they, okay, should we, should we use their method or should we just run it directly? Okay, let's just run it directly. In his own program, he still made use of this. Um, okay, let's use, let's use, he's only still made use of this command line um, argument. So let's, and we see a command line argument. So, but um, you can just, if you want to work with it, you can just work as normal, but we'll do both. Let's use the command line argument first. Let's import since we want, since, um, system since we want to use the command line argument. What happened to directly? All right. So remember to avoid getting any error, we're going to check if the length. So now this one I'm using, I'm using two, I'm using two because like it's two arguments I want to get. But it mustn't be two. You can use a range even if there's a specific amount of arguments you want to get just to prevent an error depending on what it is you want to receive from the user. So there's only two arguments we are planning on receiving. So sys.argv because this argv is the function we are currently calling. So um, we're just going to check if it's um, if it's if it's equal to If it's equals to two, then what we now want to do, so um we're going to create um something that we're going to assign this request. So request we're going we're going to request for a press a particular point on your on the on the web. So it's going to be R is going to be equals to so this of course I, I don't know if you are familiar with forms, but you know when you're working with forms, you have post, you have get. So get is when you want to like receive and return to the main website. Why post is want to get and you want to push it to the back end so you can now use it for maybe authenticate. Hmm. authentication or you know whatever it is that you are creating that form for so we are now going to be making use of okay yes that is that is really the perfect example so now we're not going to be making use of the get because we want to we want to return while we're returning an output to the viewers a bit to the user whoever to the person that is using your system so it's going to be request okay so they already giving to us request dot get but it's not this sys argument we want to get first because there's an there's a particular location in the web we want to get which is um, iTunes own backend. So I'm not going to copy his link here because I mean, I don't know anybody that has crammed this link up hard. So let's just copy the link again. And we're going to pass that as a string into our program. Let's close this because so I won't forget. So we're going to pass that as a string. But we're going to go a step further because the way this program is now, we're already telling the user what it is we want to get from them. But let's just clean this wizard. And um, okay, we're going to leave it black, and then the user. So, when this is passing an argument, the argument is going to give us um, 
the argument is going to be um what do you call it okay it's going to be the name of the stream the name of the active i want to get so we're just going to add that and we're not changing the way the the way the program looks because you think it's going to be after this long list at the end in the last line at the end of the line is going to be the name of the um, artist so the, the user is going to pass the artist name so if we, when, when you want to make this an official program you need to learn how to handle spaces because there are some artists that have two names and um, two space names and i think um different websites have different ways of handling space some would use and if also some will use dashi so you need to just understand how itunes handles theirs and i say um but that one is a whole different thing that is a whole different thing honestly so um, after we have done this, we're now going to print out what we got as a JSON file. It's going to be ugly, but it's just basically that stuff we downloaded. So we're just going to print out um, response. Sorry. All right, then for this other one, let's just um pass an error. So let's just pass it. So the program will just end on its own. All right, so we save it and we run it. You no, know, I don't know why I'm just used to running um running as um debugging or whatever. Let's run like this and um, install test. Okay, so we cannot pass it whatever artist we want to use here, but let's just use the artist that them they used in their own um program. And she prints like a collection of dictionaries and whatnot. So you can see, you personally, you cannot understand these. So it's not just these that are now go on and sort it. So this one also is this one. If you want to read more about this document, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving two links now. So if you want to read about an inbuilt documentation, it's going to be at um, docs.python.org. And you can now search for the model you want to read out. Whilst if it's um, like when you have to install it, on the Python index. So um okay so they sorted I'm just I'm going through what they did here so they sorted it out in two different ways the first way they did was by like looping through. So this okay. Let's let me download it. Let me download the file again. So we'll just read the file as a text file. Let me download it again. A video where I explain how to access like um nested um iterables. So you can see the first thing here we have a dictionary. So every single thing is closing within a dictionary. And dictionary takes um it takes keys and values. So this result count is um is it, this is the first this is the first key value inside it. This is the second and I don't know let me see if this one after we have let me call find out where this other square bracket went so close. Is it? Okay, it didn't close. I think this one, this one here falls under. Let me see if there's another way I can copy it and sort it out. At let me use word. I think word will sort it out for me. I don't want us to like be able to see like the whole outline so we understand what we're going to do. Because if you go to their website, they have two ways where this. Okay, the first one was making of um Jason Dub, but that one she didn't even clarify it basically because you after you have done that. You still need to now start looping through it and making it look more presentable on your own.
Let's start speaking thanks to it. Okay, why are we just waiting for it? Let's just try and see if we can just sort it out by ourselves. So we have our first key value here. This is the second key value. So I'm just I'm trying to locate where the this one ended at. So um you opened so this key value received a list and um I've not yet found where the list ended at. So that's what I'm waiting for. The text is like too much, like I'm I cannot focus on the text I'm seeing like so much. You guys okay. I've And if dictionary really has two values in it, so the first value is your result count, and the second one is your result. Under the result, we now called a list. So I mean, this is where the list ended here. So let's just break this. All right, and inside this um, list, we now have a dictionary. So this dictionary, let's break it here, and let's find out where the dictionary ended. So we know it's only the dictionary that was passed inside the list. Um. <laughs> I think this is to be it also. So it's that means the list is only holding one value. Hopefully. So as we're breaking down, we'll see. Then inside this dictionary, so okay, this dictionary now has multiple um it now has multiple values within it. So the first um value that is inside this dictionary is your wrapper type and track. Second one we have is um the kind. I don't understand what all these things are honestly. But I'm just breaking down the dictionary with the keys and the values. Okay. So if you're writing a program, maybe where you need to access certain information. So this will help you to, like know how you're accessing it. So the first thing I'm just going to call, we're going to assign this, like what we did. We're going to assign this um stuff into okay, let, let me just finish that out so we can easily do it better. I'm just adding that so that once I start explaining what they did on their own program, you understand what is happening. Actually, I can't see again. Okay. I think that's all. Okay, no, they see more. And this one is just basic list and everything. Um, space two more. Wow. All right, so we're done. This other one said everything is on the same page now, so you can read it easily. So, um, this is a monitor presentation of what it is. So we have our main dictionary, which is going to be assigned into a variable. So if we want to call, we're going to call the way we call every dictionary. So if in the dictionary, I want to access the result count, I'm going to call, let's say we name the dictionary, um, um, I don't know, dictionary. We'll say dictionary, and then we're going to have a square brace. And inside that square brace, we're not going to call result count, and if it's going to return one. But if we now, okay, let's just copy this, and let's see this inside our program. Huh? Let's copy this and see this inside our program. So, um, so I'm just going to create a new file, a new Python file. And inside this file, let's just create a new variable that is going to a new dictionary. And we're now going to assign the stuff that we just created here. Alright. So now, if we wanted to access like the result count in the dictionary bar, so what we're just going to do, we're going to call dictionary's name, which is this. Let me clear this out. We're going to call the dictionary's name, and then we're going to call this. So it should return one at its own value, because that is the value that is inside it. So to do this, we're going to um do from here, through as a boolean function, and it's usually supposed to be in a capital T. Um, let's try that again. So if you, if you use a small letter T for your boolean, it's going to raise an error. So you can see it returned one. Now, if you wanted to now print this long list of uh, of 
dictionary we have here. The way we're going to do it, although this one is going to look bulky and ugly, we're going to print results and it's going to now give us a long list of all these stuffs here. using so um we have called the dictionary and within that dictionary fabric and within it we want to access um this stuff called kind so if we save this hopefully hopefully i sorted it out well but we're going to handle this sorting now so in them this um, json i was talking about because the file we're getting is a json file so Jason, so you can see he gave us some. So I I decided I'll put together. So even so I'll have a more detailed video where I explain how to um how to access like how to access values that have been that is within like just the way we have so we have this within a this within a dictionary. I have a video on my YouTube that explained it using JavaScript. I would link if you are watching this video on YouTube, I'll link it here so you can watch it yourself. So all the things. So remember here I was talking about a file called JSON. So this JSON file has a functionality, it has something called um DOMs. So what is DOMs? <laughs> what it does is it makes your your code more readable. So it's um let's let's print out this code in a more readable manner. So we're going to enclose we're going to enclose this stuff we're printing out here with these DOMs. So um since we just imported in JSON, so let's just enclose this one in parentheses first. Okay. Then from here, we're going to now just call um JSON because we didn't import everything JSON. We just imported JSON. We're going to call JSON dot dumps, D U M P S. Now there's another argument we're not going to pass. Like it depends on how you want to index. This one takes an integer as argument. It can be whatever you want. So we just want. But I'm using what they use. So just indented this as two. So we're just going to do um indent, which is going to be equals to. So this is not doing anything special. It's just going to make the code we got earlier. I'm going to just make it more presentable. Oh, sorry. Well, I don't know why I'm just addicted to running my code from this um, run function. Sorry, because we're working with this um, arg. So I see receiving an argument. So we need to receive an argument even though the code is not going to run properly. If you are running this, don't forget, I think I'll just maybe I'm not even releasing really source code. Alright, so I don't know if you remember the first way it was when we ran it initially, but I can see now when we have run it again, there's just remember this stuff, this file I just created here is just returning that now. So you have split up every single thing and returned this exact file that I just spent hours creating. So now that I know how to use DOMS, I wouldn't go and sit down because this one now didn't take it took a lot of my time, but it didn't take as much time because it was just one response we got. But what if I was getting like a thousand songs? Jason Dumps makes it easier, it's so straight, but we can still not really. So, um, now assessing this information, there are different ways to do it. So, remember here, remember here when I now printed because I wanted to just print the kind of the song we wanted. So, right now, it's only one um, response we're getting, but if we're let's say getting a thousand songs now, what I'll now do, I would now look through it. I will say okay, maybe for whatever it is for something in outdoor Jason. I will say um so I was okay. Let, let let's do that. Let's print out the kind of song for it. So um let's come here. So we're going to just look through it. So for um.
for I hear Do I mean I'm looping through all this? Oh, let's should we access some let's access let's break it down. Let's access an individual slot inside um the program. So it's just it's going to make it instead of having to call multiple dictionaries because you said we uh, when we're printing, we're printing so many things. So we can say um L is equals to so so in the program here they just access um results. So um for I in L I wanna access the L the way you would access any dictionary by calling the name of or the um by calling what do you call it the the key of that dictionary of the value you want to access. So now that I've done this, we have we're now within a list, so we cannot start treating it as a normal list. So we're now print. So you see, now we're inside the list, and within the list we have a dictionary. So all we now want to do to now access from within dictionary is now to call the key. So the key that they called here was track name. So I just create getting the track name. So basically, what this one is going to do is now going to be that if we have multiple lists inside, I want to get like all the songs by the particular artist. Doing this now, what did I just do? <laughs> Doing this will now give us all the track, um, all the names of the tracks that. Uh, what, what am I doing? So what we just need to do now, we were just diving out. But basically, I was just you just I just introduced you to two um models now. The request model, which allows you to um access APIs of um other like it allows you to have an access to certain parts of the database of companies and i listen like by here he used itunes you can use for google maps it allows you to have like certain information that you have made available to the public then um json which allows because app is return um app is return um a json file or something like that the json response and if you now want to search it because you personally you cannot really retreat because because like this one we did was good was just very small if you are working with like complex program, it's going to be large and you cannot sit down on your own and start like going through it and sorting. You can, I mean, but it's not reasonable. So JSON now allows you to now work with all those files, all those um stuff you now get. It allows you to sort and there are many more things you can do with it, which um broaden be doing in this video today here. Then okay. So lastly, I said um I said that um, there are three different types of um library. So there's the built-in library that comes with Python as you're installing Python. There is the um, packages that you install from um, PYPI. And then you can create your own. So I'm just going to create something very, very simple. So creating a library is a collection of functions. We already know how to work with functions. So this is going to be very easy. I'm just going to be very straightforward. So if you want to define a function, Okay, if you wanted to <laughs> if you wanted to if, um we wanted to create a function that um added two numbers. So it's obviously going to have to take um two numbers as its argument. Then we'll now just add it. So we're going to um print I wanted to be able to access this file we just created in this program here. What we do, we're going to import. So we can, I can just say from file, import this. I can just import everything in file, but let's just say from file. So we'll just call it um, add from file, import, add. I think that's why I called it, right? Then um, I'm not going to say, um, so 
So I don't need to call print. So had it been I instead of print there, I used return. So now I now need to print add this. But I'm just printing it directly. So what I'm not going to do is then just call um add and he asked for two arguments. I'm going to have to pass those two arguments and seven. And I can save this. So if I run it, I'm expecting it to add um the program for me successfully. Okay, so right now it's a very small program. But let's say if there's something you use a lot when you're working on program, and maybe there's like something similar to that. Like even now, if this program I worked was like solving something that we didn't have something about, I would have like deployed it to PyPy because you personally you can deploy your own packages there. So you just but if you want to just use locally on your system, you just write a collection of codes that you make use of a lot in your programs. So instead of having to now start rewriting you know, or you can even import it if you have a fixed directory for it, but you can just copy it into the directory you're working on and be importing um different functions from um that current directory you're working on. So but that's basically everything. So there are a lot of libraries you can make use of when you're working in um when you're working with Python, both inbuilt and um normal packages so you guys just for you to just go to those i'll leave the links in the description for you so, so you can just go there just read on the ones you want to work on like um numpy not we're not touching numpy now but once we're done with this series that is the next one we're going to jump into numpy so and there are many more there are just some that are just very very popular pillow that's to allow you to work with images but yeah for now that's um currently the end of this slide if you don't have any question Okay, and yeah, if you want, if you'd be interested in this, because you even told me to, I, I downloaded Call of Duty for you guys, but on my phone, she not on my laptop. I downloaded Call of Duty for you guys. So if you want to, if you want to watch my, my gameplay, I will link my Twitch in, um, I'll release a video now that is in my Twitch, but I'll link my Twitch in my link tree. If you check my TikTok, I have a link tree there. So you can just, um, go over to my link tree and just follow me on Twitch. So um, anytime I go live, it's usually in the afternoon. So I come like here on TikTok for coding tutorials um, in the evening by 11 p.m. West African time. And um, in the morning, in the afternoon, I go live on Twitch and I stream. There are two games I'm currently playing, Mobile Legends and um, Mobile Legends and Call of Duty. I was trying that PUBG before, um, that, but I don't know. They didn't allow me to heal myself. I just already sold it. I don't know. But yeah, if you guys are interested in watching that, then you can just follow me and just show some support over there. But yeah, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys here um tomorrow. When is even Christmas, honestly? When is Christmas?